uh, as I was a, when I was a small child, my mother had an uncle that worked in the Vatican Secretary of State's office as a civilian. And on occasions when he would come home to visit the family, uh, he would sit for hours and talk about the international intrigue going on behind the scenes of world government and religion. And, and it was fascinating to me. And I grew up with this. I have a senator and a congressman in my family from long ago. I have federal judges in my family. So I grew up in, in the atmosphere of politics behind the scenes, listening to uh, very wise men in politics and religion talking about conspiracies and international injury. And so I was very interested in this subject in my teens. And then, of course, when I first heard uh, your albums that you produced on the Illuminati, all the pieces began to fit together better for me because I understood there was world conspiracy. Something that the old man said many years ago, he said that conspiracies are able to deal with just about anything. They can buy you off, they can shoot you, they can deal with you in just about any way they want. Well, they, the own one, the, they own the money system. Right, but the one thing he said they cannot deal with is exposure. No conspiracy can deal with exposure. Once the truth is out, and the people understand, then they have problems. And I am saying that the, the power of any government is in people. And, and a classic example of that, how would you like to go to a summit with the king of America and the king of China and you being the king of Fredonia with 500 subjects? You might as well stay home because the power of a king is in how many people are in his, in his kingdom. So the point I'm making here is that there is a tremendous power in the hands of the people of America if they would just wake up because they are the power of this country. The people decide what will happen and the people have allowed these things to happen and, and allow them to continue to go their way and be entertained and, and, and that is the problem that we're facing. Not only with the religious and political leaders that are part of this, but the, po the, but the real problem is the people have allowed it to happen. Well, in the land of the blind, the one eye is king. Terry Cook, uh, you came on strong and heavy just a few years ago, and you become the expert on this new computer chip that's supposed to go in the back of the hand. It all relates to this Council on Foreign Relations group, the Bilderbergers, the Club of Rome, this oligarchy who's trying to bring it all about. That's right. Anthony, um, let's make a very complex issue as simple as possible for the people's benefit. The New World Order really consists of three aspects. There is a New World political system that everyone today is calling the New World Order, as well as that there is a, an economic plan for the New World Order, and that is called the New World Economic Order. Uh, in addition to those two items, there is a third plan for religion. You see, uh, the planners of the world know that men need a religion of some kind, even if it's a false one. So they have a plan to give us a new age, world, global, occultic religion. So really, there's, there's three aspects to this new world order. A new world economic order in which a computer chip will be injected into our hands or foreheads as a means to track, control, and identify us, and will also be used to uh, make our purchases and scan its Well, they've, they've already put the program in in Los Angeles. In fact, uh, right. a trilateralist uh, named Mayor mm -hmm. Bradley, Uncle Tom Bradley, was uh, responsible for putting right. this in dogs. Right. And your children will be uh, considered like animals, like animals. And uh, But, you know, uh, before we get into that, which is uh, uh, later down the road, I think we should clearly explain to people what the Illuminati is. You know, for, for those of us uh, who are acquainted with this term, uh, we don't have to explain it to ourselves, but for the average person out there, they've never heard this term. Jordan, explain to people what Illuminati means. Well, it comes from, <clears throat> the word Illuminati comes from the Latin word illuminan or illumin, which in, it is, means light. And so anyone who is enlightened or brilliant, and of course those who are the most uh, enlightened are called brilliant people. Well, it comes from Lucifer. Well, what we're I, really I'm talking getting, about here yeah. is Lucifer, the fallen angel. and They have picked up on this, the Illuminati. And if you take a look at some of the Chevys, now they're called the... Illumin. Lumen, and they have the horns going up in, in the back of the, uh, the vehicle, very subtly telling us that something is coming down by the year 2000. Yes. Well, as, as I was saying, it, it implies those who hold the light, 
the enlightened ones, and they, they sent us a statue, as a matter of fact, mm -hmm. those, uh, those ancient Illuminatis sent us a statue called the Statue of Liberty. It's holding the torch, the torch of illumination, which is the Promethean torch of Freemasonry. And if you go to the Statue of Liberty, you'll see a bronze plaque inside saying that this was given to the government of America by the French Grand Orient Temple Masons. And it is a symbol of Grand Orient Freemasonry in, in America, the holder of the light. And that's the, exactly the same torch that is carried during the uh, Olympics. It is the torch well, of Prometheus. The, it's not the, the torch of freedom. No, it's, it's not the, the torch, torch of freedom. It's the torch of the Illumination. Illuminati. Illumination. So essentially, in a nutshell then, Jordan, these, these men whom we tend to call or, or group in a in an organization called the Illuminati. It's a loose-knit uh, but tightly uh, secretive organization. Well, operating yeah, through the Council on Foreign right. Relations, through the Trilateral right. Commission, through the Club of Rome, through Global 2000, which right. wants to reduce the population mm -hmm. of the planet by, uh, what is it, 25%. Uh, 25, percent. Mm -hmm. 25 well, that's two, uh, 1, 250 million people have to be exterminated by the year 2000. Well, they, they can do that. So they essentially, the this, technology. this Illuminati then is, is the group of men who control not only all the money on the planet through all the world banks and the Federal Reserve and so on, but they control essentially all the governments. And so these men are planning to bring, a, uh, bring about a global form of government that's unique in all history. It's a total enslaving system of world communism and fascism controlled by a hierarchy in Europe uh, that uh, Anthony calls what? The oligarchy. Well, no, I call it the evil arch. The evil arch. The oligarchy okay. of evil. So these men are satanically inspired, and of course we get that term from the Bible, which means the devil. They're satanically inspired to bring about a global form of government to every nation on earth. I wanted to add also that on the back of the Liberty Dime, um, on the back of the old dime in America, there was the fashion which uh, you look in the encyclopedia or dictionary and look at the word fascism, you'll see that the symbol for world fascism was a bundle of sticks or bundle of rods with a hatchet head. That was on the back of the Well, you see that dime. on each side of the speaker's podium at Congress. Oh, absolutely. So they and have the, the fascia on each side. Absolutely, and it's also the symbol for the United States Senate is the fascia. But, I'm, uh, but the point I want to make is that that was on the old dime. Now, on the new dimes, you will see it has been transplanted uh, a torch instead of the old fasci because fascism was used at one time to prepare the world for the new world order. Now the new world order is in, in place. That's why on the dollar bill it says Nova Sodo Seclorum is new order of the world, but at the top of the pyramid on the back of the dollar bill is Anuit Coeptus, which is not means our enterprise or our project has been crowned with success. So the point I want to make is that on the back of the American dime today, anyone can look at the back of the dime and see the torch of illumination, which is carried in the Olympics, which is the torch that the Statue of Liberty carries. It is the torch of the Illuminati who are illuminated. But what we need to do is explain this term New World Order because do you realize how few people out, out there have actually heard George Bush and others use this occultic phrase that we're talking about, the New World Order? George Bush said it well over 200 times and if you ask the average person on the street if they even heard it once, they'll answer no. When Hitler talked about a thousand year Reich and Bush talks about a thousand points of light. There's more than just a small similarity. They are one and the same. We're talking about a fourth right the rich, and that's what we're talking about with the New World Order. They that's want right. it all. And that, that fiat funny money that right. we use isn't money at all. It's debt in the privately owned Federal Reserve. Well, that's right. the privately owned Federal Reserve is neither federal nor a reserve. It's private. That's right. A private banking institution which is draining us. It's like uh, America is a, an invalid in the hospital mm -hmm. and dying, mm -hmm. and they're putting up an, I, uh, an IV bleed to right. bleed us of the remaining mm -hmm. blood that we have to bring us down to the very uh, bottom. That's absolutely correct, Anthony. And since you brought up the Federal Reserve, let's, uh, let's look at the back of our dollar bill and uh, analyze the symbol of the Illuminati. That's what this is, folks. It's also a Masonic symbol, but it's the symbol of the Illuminati, which controls, as Anthony said, all your money through the Federal Reserve, all the U.S. government money, and through other world banks, all the world's money. But this is their symbol, and this is basically the all-seeing eye of Lucifer, Satan, the devil. And what this inscription means here is announcing the birth of the Satanic New World Order government. 
And Jordan, when was this placed on our dollar bill and by whom, and what was the story? Well, it was placed in uh, 1934, 35, I think it was, originally on the dollar bill. But uh, what I wanted to draw attention to is the fact that it's an Egyptian pyramid. And you, you had better look at the idea of why an Egyptian pyramid is on an American dollar bill. Well, it's a symbol of slavery, Jordan, because that pyramid was put together with slave labor. And on, our, and on our dollar bill, this is the reverse seal. And if we take a look at the schematic of Washington, D.C., we see the layout. Right, but it was also one of the greatest bricklaying projects the world has ever known. And bricklayers are referred to as brick masons. So it is a symbol of the Masonic orders of the world. That makes sense. And, uh, and it is a very powerful symbol that has been used by the ancient secret societies. And I am here to tell you that that pyramid called Cheops Pyramid is a very important symbol to the world Illuminati. And they're constructing the Illuminati Luxor up in Las Vegas. Oh, I understand. On that. Las Vegas Boulevard. Is I was up there with what, uh, what our, our cameraman here. And... Uh, is that a new hotel in Las Vegas? A new hotel, 33 mm -hmm. stories, I mean, with the, with the capstone. What's uh, the significance of 33, Anthony? Well, I think Jordan would be better uh, yeah, it, able to answer it, it, when that. We get into, when we get into numerology, that is a whole uh, interesting subject of how numbers are used by the ancient world. And 13 is an unlucky number, we're told. It's a satanic number. Well, right? but, but it's, a, it's called an unlucky number because originally it dealt with Jesus and his 12. Jesus and the 12 make the 13, upon which a new order of, the, of life would be established on earth. Uh, the, uh, the conspirators have then seized upon this term of the 13, Jesus plus the 12, and have begun to build on that a new world order. Something I wanted to bring out about this new world order because we said we want to explain it. Let me make this point that Europe is referred to as the old world, and anything coming from Europe is the old world. Uh, what if when you understand that Europe dominated the world for almost 1,600 years, the Vatican dominated Europe. The Vatican dominated the old world order. Those banking families that were Roman uh, Catholic banking families of Europe were the powers of the world. They dominated the world. With the coming of America, America becomes known as the New World. Remember, Columbus discovered a new world. When we hear the word new world order, we're talking about a fraternal order of power, religion, money, operating out of the new world, but, America. But a satanic, occultic, evil form of power. The big picture, they want it all. They want to enslave your child, your wife, your mother. There isn't anything that you ever had. There isn't anything that you own. There isn't any right that you possess that they're not planning on taking away. They want it all. Uh, you've got a choice. You can join in this fight, or you can die as a slave. When George Bush used this term, he used several other terms that went along with this term, New World Order. He also said, a thousand points of light. He used another term, New Age. Another term, peace and safety. Jordan, who else in history has used this terminology? Well, of course, uh, all of the despots of history have used similar terminology, and it's always been the same concept of a total world domination. Uh, go back to Nebuchadnezzar and, uh, in Babylon, talking about how he had gathered all the peoples under him and how, how impressed he was with himself. You go down the line, and all of the great dictators and tyrants of the world have always dreamed of taking over the world, but everyone tried it the wrong way. Everyone has tried to take over the world with military, and everyone has discovered that military will not work. You cannot police and militarize enough to take over the world. So the Illuminati in 1776 developed a whole new concept of how to pull this project off. Instead of trying to force people into a new order or a totalitarian dictatorship, on the military, which you cannot do because people are always going to rebel at that, the idea was developed uh, by uh, Adam Weishaupt to create enough violence and create enough chaos and, and enough bloodshed to frighten the world so that the entire world of mankind would one day come to the conclusion that there's too much bloodshed, too much crime, and there's just no possible way for the human race to exist unless we come together and pool our resources and all of us accept one government and one order and we will all live together in peaceful, happy, on one family and nothing could be further from the truth. Are the 
Satanist involved in the New Age movement? Is the New Age movement really sort of a cover for this whole Luciferian conspiracy, in your opinion? I wouldn't say it's a cover. I would say it's the integral part of it, you know, the, the spiritual heart of uh, what you're talking about, you know, a new world order. In fact, Alice Bailey, who coined the term New Age, who was a, a psychic and a channeler and an occultist, coined the term New Age and also coined the term New World Order. They both came from the same source. In her book, Externalization of the Hierarchy, she said that the New World Order would be based on the ancient wisdom or ancient occultism. Which now, is, Madam, is where the term yeah. New Age came from. Madam Helena Petrovna Blavatsky right. wrote a magazine. I've had the, the bound works of that magazine uh, entitled Lucifer, Lucifer Magazine. Uh, she had a lot of followers. Adolf Hitler was one. Mm -hmm. uh, he certainly incorporated a lot of the occult uh, symbology well, let me, into, let me comment uh, on that real yes, quickly. The, right. yeah, the term swastika, that is not a German term. The, the, the very name swastika is a Hindu word, and it's a symbol. Now, you, most people in the audience have probably never heard of this, but in occultism, the, it, it deals a lot with energies, with powers and forces, and these powers and forces come through something that are called chakras. And the word chakra is a Hindu word which means spinning vortex. Now the swastika is a, a symbol of the chakras that are energized and, and working in unison. So the word swastika is a Hindu word, not a German word. And the word Aryan, the word Aryan is a Hindu word. Now it has nothing to do with ancient Germans. The Aryans were the, uh, the Brahmin caste of Hinduism. So much of, uh, of the terminology and concepts that Hitler used were from esoteric Hinduism and had nothing to do with, you know, ancient uh, German culture or folklore at all. Now, I've got a magazine which looks something like Time magazine. Mm -hmm. On the front cover, it talks about power places of the earth and a great meeting over in uh, Egypt where they were going to have a channeling conference. And of course, at the turn of the century, at the year 2000, I believe all of the leaders are going to be at the base of the Great Pyramid. Is this correct, uh, Jordan? Yes, it was in the Los Angeles Times. I still have the article where all of the major leaders of the world governments are going to meet, and George Bush has an open invitation to be there. It's called the World Millennium Society, and they're going to meet there in 1999. And I guess one of the... As rock, in Millennium 2000. Well, that's why one of the rock yeah. singers, I think it was Prince, that had the song a Party Like It's 1999, because those who are in the know know that something is coming for the year 2000, and the, most of the people are sound asleep and have no idea what's, what's on its way. So that's why the song came out, Party Like It's 1999, because the L.A. Times had an article, all the major leaders of the world are going to meet at the base of the pyramid in 1999, to bring in what they call the Novus Ordo Seclorum, the new order of the world. What we have in the New Age movement isn't just something from the top down. It's uh, the masses are being conditioned also. It's not just, uh, okay, most people, when they hear the term New Age, automatically, they think of fringe religious groups. They think of Shirley MacLaine. They think of crystals, you know. But this goes far beyond, uh, you know, individuals like that, personalities. Main, not just mainstream American culture, but mainstream European culture, this is going, Japanese culture, is being redirected and restructured for a mystical experience of what they call higher consciousness, to be guided and directed in a mystical Wait a sense. I did an interview with Benjamin Krem, who's the representative of Lord, let's see, I call him Lord Betraya. Uh -huh. uh, I talked about uh, Adolf Hitler being influenced by Matt Lovatsky because he brought up um, brought up Blavatsky and I brought up the Lucifer magazine and he was very discombobulated. He really didn't know exactly know where to go. I thought I, he would hang up on me mm -hmm. and the conversation was coming from England. Mm -hmm. uh, do you expect to see Lord Betraya mixed in with all of these uh, so-called leaders of the world to usher in this well, millennium of Satan? I talked to, I, when this uh, first came out about Lord Matra, I called up the Alice Bailey organization, Lucis Trust, which by the way used to be Lucifer, 
publishing company. Uh, I was up in Ojai, California and saw one of their old books and it said Lucifer Publishing Company in it. But I called up the Alice Bailey uh, organization to talk to their, uh, their head person and he told me that Benjamin Cram was like a renegade, that uh, his lord my trade did not have the official sanction of the Alice Bailey and This is at the Meditation Center in Ojai? Oh, New York City. Uh, by the way, Alice Bailey's group was in the United Nations Plaza. There is so much more that needs to be said about this subject that we can never possibly get into. But there is something I really feel is necessary to bring out. We're not talking about something that's entertaining or sensational. We're talking about your government, wh where you live, your country, your freedoms. Right. And what we're talking about here is things which you see every day. Like someone said a long time ago, many will look with their eyes but not see and listen with their ears but not hear. And that's us. That is this country. We have been looking at things all along and never realizing the significance of the occult emblems that we're seeing today. Okay. We're talking about a global government that's in existence right now. We're not talking about a nation that is going. We're talking about a nation that is gone. We do not control the government of the United States of America. The United States of America is controlled by this evil arc. They control the money system. They control the State Department. They control the presidency. And if you take a look at the fasci on each side of the uh, speaker's podium in the Senate, you're going to find that we have a new world order in place. What do we have to do? Incite a revolution to avoid a revolution? Or wait for the second coming? The choice is up to you. The privately owned Federal Reserve is just that. It's private. It's not owned by you. The national debt is to the international banksters. Communism was never, well, run from the United States. Or was it? Well, You've you got to stop and think about that for a moment. And when you really find out what's going down, you really find out what's going down at the bottom line, you'll discover that communism was never run from Moscow, Hanoi, or Peking. It was run from London, New York, and Washington, D.C. On the back side of the dollar bill, you'll find the Illuminati Pyramid, Anuit Septus, Novus Ordo Seclorum, the New World Order. What is all that about? Uh, I'm going to ask Jordan Maxwell. Jordan? Yes, I, I will use this one I think would be better for. Um, the Novus, uh, let's start with the Anuit Coeptus. Anuit Coeptus is Latin, meaning uh, our enterprise or our project is now a success or has been crowned with success. So then you say, well, it, your, your project is now crowned with success. What is the project? Novas Ordo Seclorum, which is novus, meaning new, ordo, order, the new order. Seclorium is the word secular in Latin, meaning the world, the new order of the world. You will notice that there are 13 layers in the pyramid. There are 13 letters in Anuit Coeptus. There are 13 stars above the uh, head of the eagle. There are 13 berries and 13 leaves. There are 13 arrows. There are 13 stripes. Everything is done in sequence of 13 except the wings, which are 32 and 33 for the 32nd degree and 33rd degree of Freemasonry. Uh, the 13 is said to be an unlucky number because it represents originally Jesus and the 12, because Jesus and the 12 are the basis for the world. And so this has been borrowed and used, and I think very cleverly. So, and so it's, uh, it's an unlucky number, we're told, because you're not supposed to use it. Uh, to show you how this uh, symbolism on the dollar bill is very, there's quite a bit of symbolism on the dollar bill here. Uh, I want to draw your attention to the right hand side of the one dollar bill at the top of the, on the one. You'll see at the top right here on the little curvature, if you look very closely, you will see an owl that you can, it is used as a symbol because it sees things in the dark. The little owl on the symbol on the dollar bill is to symbolize something the Bohemian Society, which is incidentally meeting this month uh, up in San Francisco. The owl is a occult symbol used by the Bohemian Society and the Illuminati in general because it symbolizes that you can, 
it is used as a symbol because it sees things in the dark, and that's why it's wise, implying that our political leaders are seeing things in the dark. They, they are uh, aware of many dark things which are going on, and that's why they're wise, and you're not. So that's why they are the, the yeah, owls on the dollar It's bill. important to bring up this particular point. The Bohemian Grove, and this is where all of the fellas meet and run around it in the, uh, the forest nude, uh, is where this new uh, council for the President of the United States uh, goes uh, when he is on vacation. And his name is? Yeah, well, all the presidents are No, there. I'm talking about the new so-called Republican advisor of the, uh, to the President of the United States. And, of course, we found uh, individuals like um, Ronald Reagan, uh, Gerald Ford, uh, Carter, all dressed in black robes, uh, yes. hooded robes, looking up and <coughs> worshiping what? Uh, the owl. The, the owl, owl in front of a bonfire, a large bonfire. And, incidentally, we have pictures of all of the American presidents. This has appeared in three different magazines, which I have color pictures of all the American presidents standing around the bonfire in capes and pointed hats like the Ku Klux Klan type of regalia. Well, I'm, and, I'm a little confused, yes. and I may, maybe others are out there. Look, what is this Bohemian Society? Uh, where are they located, and are they another subgroup of the yes, Skull and Bones, the Illuminati, the Bilderbergers? I mean, all these other cults, are, they're just another subgroup then, right? Yes, but, but this, is a, this is a social group. This is a, uh, a purely a social get-together that, uh, that they say they, don't, they do not express business or discuss business. Well, wait a minute, I don't think so. At a social group, you don't generally stand out in the, uh, uh, in the woods uh, dressed uh, in Ku Klux, in Klux, Klan, Ku Klux outfit. Klan outfits, uh, you know, worshiping the owl. Yeah, in front of a bonfire. But there's a reason for that, because the fire is the fire of the illumination. The fire, the fire is of what the Illuminati. Of the Illuminati, of course. And we're talking about Ronald Reagan, who so many oh, of yes. the conservatives oh, uh, supported. I, they used to call oh, him Red ab Ronnie. Absolutely. Ronald Reagan is, uh, is, is a member of this organization. Just as, uh, and incidentally, in their own publication, they say that the reason they are called the Bohemian Society, because uh, a Bohemian is someone, I'm roughly paraphrasing, someone who does not live by the same morals and ethics that the populace does. And so they're saying that the people who lead this country meet in private because they don't live by the same morals and ethics you do. They have a whole different standard of behavior than you do. Now, Ronald Reagan was a member of the United World Federalists for 13 years. He wanted to bring about a new world order upon the ashes of American sovereignty. Is it possible that uh, you haven't got the full message about Red Ronnie? In fact, Red Ronnie, that's not in my terms. That's what they called him in Hollywood. A member of the uh, American Veterans Committee, twice cited as uh, an instrument of the Soviet Union. Uh, he was the first uh, individual in the band, well, speaker, major speaker, uh, uh, personality uh, at the Hollywood Legion Stadium to ban the bomb. He was developed. He put on a mask, and I think it's time that we take off that particular mask. So the, these Bohemians, then they meet once a year up in San Francisco? For the last two weeks of July, from July 15th to the end of July, they meet for two weeks every year. For uh, two solid, continuous weeks? For two weeks. solid weeks. They meet in Conclave, and, uh, and some, some of the most important movie stars, uh, national leaders from around the world, and they say it's the only place that, uh, that enemies, so-called enemies, on, on both sides of a war can meet quietly. Uh, behind the scenes and be friends. So they go off for this two-week period of bonding and yeah, uh, socializing, and, socializing uh, and chit chatting, and getting together uh, to decide what war they're going to have next time and who's going to be the enemy and who will be uh, the, the good guy. And so, uh, uh, Jordan, we have pictures. And remember, war is good business. Uh, now we we have pictures with the president uh, with his hand stretched out, holding a, a red rose. a red rose. rose. But I have about 15 major color pictures of communist leaders throughout the world uh, holding a red rose in their hand. And these are from newspapers and magazines. Uh, I began to pick up on this because someone uh, alerted me to it, that the symbol of the red rose in implies not only socialism and communism, but a secret society operating behind socialism and communism that find, uses the red uh, rose this way out Willie holding the rose. We find right. Khrushchev, we find uh, all the communist Brezhnev, leaders all holding the, communist the red rose. Leaders. And then we find the President of the United States over 
in his early years uh, leading anti-American demonstrations in the Soviet Union. Well, I know, but I'm saying that it, it's, it's not enough to say these things. You really must show the pictures so that people will see that what we're talking about here are symbols and emblems. Well, well yes. even Hitler used uh, red and black, didn't he? Yes, so, he uh, certainly and did. He, and he said that uh, Nazism is uh, similar to socialism. Didn't he? Did he well, no, well, na Nazi means National Socialist. National, national socialist. socialist means right. Nazi. Benito Mussolini was, uh, before he, he founded uh, the Fascist Party, was associated with the Communist Party. In fact, Adolf Hitler, on uh, February 5th, I think it was 1941, he said, basically, National Socialism and Marxism are the same. The whole of National Socialism is based on it. That's interesting, because here we have Gorbachev, very frequently using the term new world order and he says it's going to bring about a new world community a new kind of civilization in fact quote unquote and then we had hitler using the same term we had bush using the same term august 23rd 1939 what are the fellows doing here they are putting together an agreement the communazi peace pact the molotov ribbentrop peace pact the hitler stalin <laughs> pact they joined together and then on september 1st 1939 what do they do they were talking about uh, the invasion of Poland. And they did, in fact, invade Poland and rape and ravage that particular nation. Now, let me bring up this, this point, that uh, if you'll remember that uh, Mussolini was an ally of Adolf Hitler, and that Adolf Hitler signed two concordant tr contracts with the Vatican. The Pope Pius XII signed two contracts with Adolf Hitler, that he would throw full Catholic support in Europe behind the new regime of Adolf Hitler if Hitler uh, upon, winning, upon winning the World War would establish the Roman Catholic Church as the only le legitimate uh, religion of the world under the new order of the world. So uh, there Dr. was a contract yes. In signed. Dr. Anthony Sutton's book, uh, Wall Street and the Rise of Hitler, we find that uh, the Bush family was heavily involved yes. in financing Hitler and uh, the Kennedy family as well. Right. Now the point is, I want to continue with this. When, when you understand we're talking about the Vatican, we're talking about Hitler, and Mussolini, we're talking about the fascist of Europe in war with America and England. Now we're talking about the empire strikes back. And as we said in the last program, New York is the empire state. That's why you have uh, Steven Spielberg and George Lucas movies talking about uh, uh, ha uh, the, the Lost Ark, uh, the Raiders of the Lost Ark. Who was that, uh, going for the Lost Ark with Indiana Jones but Adolf Hitler? And in the last crusade, it's Adolf Hitler again. So well, what we're Hollywood talking is about making here is not for the profit, but for the propaganda. In, in for the propaganda. Is, yes. But you see, they know what they're saying. And as I brought out to you before, the old magic practicing priest of, the, uh, of, of England, the old Celtic priest, used to work their magic like Merlin the magician with his magic wand. And magic wands were always made out of Hollywood. So I'm saying that Hollywood has been used by... And that's why motion picture stars are called movie stars. Because in the Bible, stars were referred to as lesser illuminaries. So these lesser illuminaries are working for the big Illuminati. So the big the Illuminati are using the lesser Illuminati. The lesser illuminaries are just stars. So what, what you're saying, Jordan, is most of us are asleep. We're, We're totally very asleep. subtly being conditioned by a number of occultic organizations, occultic attacks, occultic uh, conspirators uh, to condition us into this well, coming Well, we are being new awakened, order. really, to right. the new world order. You take right. a look in, uh, in, like, Time magazine. I'm going to bring it out again. You say you want a revolution, but are we willing to pay the price? They're talking, we don't want a revolution, we want a revelation. They say, who pays for Yasser Arafat? You know who pays for Yasser Arafat? Who gets Yasser Arafat's fat out of the fire? <laughs> the United States government came over there to uh, Lebanon, when his back was against the, the, the sea, he would have been wiped out by the Israeli army. And the United States says, no, 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 because they want to control this particular conflict. They brought up U.S. troops and U.S. ships to get Yasser Arafat's fat out of the fire and bring him over to Libya because they wanted him alive, because they want a controlled conflict. The same thing is happening in South Central Los Angeles. The same thing is happening in major cities throughout the United States and throughout the world. This is conflict control, and the symbols are everywhere.
Let me explain to the audience something very simple in relation to what you're saying. In Africa, in the big game hunters in Africa for many years, used to, when you go out to hunt the big game, you wouldn't go into the jungle to look for the big game. You would hire many of the natives to go out with cans and bottles and surround about a 10-mile circle out in front of you and work in beating cans and bottles and screaming and frightening your prey, the lion or the animal that you're, that you're looking for, and he's your prey, and you keep closing in, closing in until finally whatever is out there comes out into the open mm -hmm. and he's a sitting duck. That is precisely what has been happening for the last hundred years. The Illuminati have been purposely organizing, directing, and financing wars, revolutions, uh, of violence, and bloodshed, so that it will sufficiently impress and frighten the world of humanity into accepting a new order, a new police state that will finally put down all the law and order, uh, the, the, the disorder in the world, and it is the oldest trick in the book. Our greatest enemy is not in a crack house, it's in the White House. It's not in a bar room, it's in the boardrooms. And so the point I'm making is that we are being manipulated from the very top and we need to wake up and find out that America is not the land of the free and the home of the brave because we're not free any and longer. we darn sure ain't brave. Any longer. Any longer. Well, it's time to wake the town and tell the sheeple. Uh, we're being led <clears throat> like sheep to the slaughter. I don't know if you've ever seen sheep go to the slaughter, but they are generally led by a Judas goat. The Judas goat will bring them all the way up the ramp and right before they drop the trap on the sheep, the Judas goat steps to the side. And that's why they, and they have their offspring, these Illuminati refer to their offspring in their publications as their children, their offspring. They refer to your offspring as kids. You have kids because you're just like a goat. Sheeple. You're sheeple. Sheeple. That's why you have kids. And your children are going to be slaughtered you if know. you go along with the program. There's no question about it. They're going to be identified. They're going to be marked. Uh, Hillary, how much clout? Well, Hillary has brought in Janet Reno. I keep thinking of Janet Reno as sort of Hyman uh, Himmler in drag. Yeah. There was a war waged on a Christian church in Waco. This is the first time there has been an armed military assault against the United States people since the Civil War. And we ate it, didn't we? Yeah, we and the it. people sat back and said, Oh, well, guy, we got to get rid of that fanatic, those, those, those crazies yeah. out there. Yeah, they they said, so, in the name of God, Time Magazine, what happens when believers embrace the dark side of faith? Now, as I understand it, and correct me if I'm wrong, Terry, uh, Koresh never went in and attacked the ATF. He had never attacked uh, the government. The government attacked them. Well, there appears to be no substantiation for it. Those are allegations made by the government. But it's interesting. Uh, and they know, gave the orders to, to slaughter. Uh, Reno yeah. gave the orders from, which came down from the president. Well, the, of the very United first States. indictments were sealed. We still don't know what he's guilty of. No. They have sealed indictments, and we'll never know what he was supposed to be guilty of. Mass murder in America and the sheep. Oh, and the people you know, they're, they're they're looking up. They don't know what's going on. But, they don't know what's going down. But you know, the ironic thing of this is that the government used the fact that allegedly Koresh had been uh, perhaps molesting some children and so they said well we have to save the children by going in and killing them all. Is, isn't that <laughs> paradoxical? Really, yeah, with American tanks, we, you, you, right. as you see the, the flames are going up right up uh, right. on top there. Right. No question about it. So you know we, we can't allow this abuse and they, to they go said, on. They uh, said uh, David was shot in the, uh, in the head? Yes. Right. Not by himself, but by, see the, the flames are going up right up uh, right. on top there? Not by himself but by the ATF or agents from this uh, multi-jurisdiction, uh, uh, what, MJ... MJTF is Multi-Jurisdictional multi Task, Task Force, Force Police. MJTF, Multi-Jurisdictional we're going to be Force. taking a look at FEMA coming in? In other words, a National Police Force. Right, the Federal Emergency Management Agency. We're going right. to be taking a look at FEMA. No question about that. What is that? Well, that's one of the New World Order's... Uh, military operations uh, uh, that's and their then, gestapo yeah, and then followed by whom? Uh, the United Nations troops in your homes I was at Westwood in Wilshire in the city of Los Angeles taking a look at the city and it looked like an atomic bomb had hit it it was laid to waste 5300 fires going on at the same time and that was nothing compared and we're to talking about going. black helicopters flying over right. uh, Georgia what are they dropping? Incendiary devices? Mm -hmm. Is this a created crisis that's, uh, that's mm -hmm. coming on? Folks, there's something going on behind the scenes that you may not even be aware of because most of America is dead asleep. And remember that this thing that happened in Los Angeles happened on May 1st. Ah, May, May 1st. Day. 
the founding of the Order of the Illuminati. And that's why in the military, when you're in trouble, you say a May Day. A May Day call means trouble. trouble. And there was trouble in Los Angeles on May Day, and it was not by chance. Now, one very important thing. This Illuminati was put together May 1st, 1776, but the cover of the Illuminati documents yes. is that we, have, we find the exact same pyramid. The exact same pyramid that is on the back side of, of the, the one dollar bill. Dollar bill. Mm -hmm. And you get into Washington, uh, D.C., and what do we see here? This is extremely important. Uh, you say, well, it couldn't possibly be that these individuals had control over that city, over that city way back in the 1790s. But if you take a look, here is the Illuminati Pyramid, the capital of the United States is the at the top of the eye of the pyramid, you see the separation. And Jordan, go on and explain that. Yes, the, the obelisk, you'll see the Egyptian obelisk here. The Egyptian obelisk points up to the top of the triangle or the top of the pyramid. We're talking about occultic forces. Uh, we're talking about the five-pointed pentagram, which was used by satanic worshipers for thousands of years. If you take the five points off of a five-pointed star or a pentagram, you have left in the middle a pentagon. That's why the United States has a pentagon. The pentagon is directed toward the North Star because according to the ancient Babylonians, that's where you, ga you gathered power from the gods of the North in war. We're talking about sex, drugs, rock and roll, violence. We're talking about a, a con concerted effort to manipulate the human beings of this country into a new order and a new world, and the people are going along with it, docile, and have not the And they say, it says idea. Novus Ordo Seclorum. That's well, on, that's you know, on that the really bill. interests me. That, the, the term Seclorum, you, you said earlier um, that that meant secular. Secular. World. secular. Now, now secular. doesn't that secular really mean more than, uh, you know, Well, these, pe these people think of themselves as God, Terry. Well, but the secular, These are the new gods. But secular, if you ask a minister what secular means, he'll say, the secular world and we Christians, meaning that it's a world, a secular world, without the God that created us. Isn't that true? Yes. So what we're looking at is we're looking at a new God, a Luciferian God, a satanic God who will be the leader of the new world order. So the new world order is the new world order without the old God of the Bible and with the new God, mm -hmm. Lucifer, Saint. Now, and you, we, you and we take want to a look out, at the pentagram. We Jordan. want to bring out one yeah. point here in relation to what he says. We're not talking about an evil genius somewhere in, in Bavaria. We're talking about America. Here is the new world order. We are in the middle of the most diabolical, conspiratorial movement ever developed on the face of the earth, right here in America, and in Washington, D.C. And the pentagram, it goes right up to the White House. And the skull and bones. For example, when, when Christ was murdered, he was murther, murdered on the hill of what? Golgotha, mm -hmm. which means what, literally? Place of the skull. Skull and bones, mm -hmm. you see? And so since then, uh, the pirates have had on their flag, all the uh, satanic evil men in the world have always utilized uh, the skull and bones. Uh, and I believe, it's my own personal interpretation, that it's to mock Christ for what they did to him now, at the hill. The Illuminati came to the United States uh, through a, uh, a fraternity, a Faustian financial fraternity mm -hmm. in 1832. And if we take a look at uh, uh, this Faustian financial fraternity, we will see that... Uh, we have the skull and bones, and we see a little 32 underneath the symbol. Now, George Bush was in there. William Buckley, Jr., who would uh, talk in very Edwardian tones. I asked Bill Buckley about his membership in the skull and bones what in New Orleans. He, he got up and went running, almost went running out of the room. He, would, he refused uh, to even comment. Uh, George Bundy. I addressed this to George Bundy. He just came completely discombobulated on the stage. I wish I had a picture of that And event. George Bush was asked one time, and he changed the subject. Of course. So That's what it's all about. People are talking about our national leaders. But it's time that we get down to the bottom line, and we shall return with just that. Uh, there is something going on here on an international, worldwide scale, right b before our eyes but that so many of us are unaware and consequently we're not really seeing what is happening. Uh, there is in fact a conspiracy or a planned world domination coming by this thing that George Bush calls a new world order. On the back of the one dollar bill there are a lot of important occult symbolism on the back of the one dollar bill. 
uh, on the left hand side you'll see the pyramid and the pyramid of Egypt. That's an Egyptian pyramid on, a, on an American dollar bill. Um, the significance <clears throat> is very important. Above the uh, pyramid, you will see the words Anuit Coeptus, which basically means in Latin, our enterprise is a success, or our project has been crowned with success. And the, the project, which is a success, is on the banner beneath the pyramid, uh, Novas Ordo Seclorum, uh, being Latin for new order of the world, or the new world order. On the bottom of the pyramid, you will see the Roman numerals for 1776. This exact identical emblem of the pyramid within the circle, the Novus Ordo Seclorum, uh, has not, it was not original in America. It was first found on writings that are today in museums in Europe in the year 1774, 1775, by a man named Adam Weishaupt who founded the Bavarian Order of the Illuminati, a secret society of Freemasons operating in Europe that had designs on the entire world and to bring about what they call a new world order. So that emblem on the back of the dollar bill on the left-hand side with the, with the pyramid is not an American symbol. It is a very old symbol Jordan, coming you from you a... You should bring out the fact that this is the Order of the Illuminati. Yes. And the May 1st, 1776, did not signi uh, signify the creation of the United States of America, no, no, but the all. order of the Illuminati for the enlightened ones or the Luciferians. Yes. And this is a satanic symbol. It is on the cover of the Illuminati documents from May 1st, 1776, which obviously precedes the birth of this nation on July 4th, 1776.